us try an example to design a simply supported two-way slab. The thickness is 220 mm. The span is 4.5 meter in the shorter span and 6.3 meter for the longer span. The QK is 10 kN per meter square. The concrete strength is 25 and the steel strength is 500 megapascal. The slab is have the exposure class of XC1 and H12 reinforcement bar is expected to be used for the slab. The question asks us to design for the slab. You may pause the video for a while for you to work out the solution. First, analyze the load here. The permanent actions it will be the self weight of the slab which is obtained by multiplying the height of the slab with the unit weight of the slab you will get 5.5 kN per meter square the QK is given as 10 kN per meter square therefore the design load it will be 1.35 GK plus 1.5 QK which is equals to 22.4 kN per meter square to find the design moment you need to refer to table 3.13 BS at 110. Before that, you need to determine the ratio LY per LX. It is obtained by dividing the longer span with the shorter span, which eventually it is found to be 1.4. Referring to table 3.13, LY per LX equals to 1.4, the alpha SX and alpha SY it will be 0 0.09 and 0 0.051 respectively. Substitute this value into the equations, you will get the moment resistance for the shorter span and for the longer span. Next, you calculate the design shear load. It is obtained by referring to table 3.15, which is this table. You are looking for beta v v s and beta v y for the ratio of l y per l x 1.4 and it is a simply supported slab therefore you are talking about a 4 h discontinuous member the ratio you will be 0 0.43 and 0 0.33 Substitute this coefficient into the equations, you will be able to obtain the shear loads of 43.3 and 33.2 for the shorter and the longer span respectively. Next, you need to design for the reinforcement. To do so, you need the effective depth. The effective depth for the shorter span and the longer span vary with each other. But before that, you need to determine the nominal cover. Taking the exposure class to be XC1, referring to table 4.4n in EC2, which is in this table, XC1, the recommended class to be S4, so the C minimum due to the durability will be 15. Taking into the considerations of the other two components of the uh, C minimum, you will obtain the C minimum as 15. The nominal cover will be equals to C min plus the deviations. In, all, in total, it will be 25 mm. The dx is calculated by minusing the thickness of the slab with the cover and half of the reinforcement bar. You will get 189 mm. As for the dy, another layer of reinforcement bar is provided at the transverse directions. Therefore, the dy is obtained by the height of the slab minus cover minus the bar diameter of the main reinforcement bar in dx and also its bar diameter so you obtain the dy equals to 177 mm next you need to calculate the amount of reinforcement bar required to resist bending so the standard 
calculation steps is applied to calculate the amount of reinforcement bar the moment here it will be different and also the depth will be different this leads to you the factor k slightly different substitute the factor k into the lever arm equations you will find that the lever arm is actually higher than 0.95d so we will use the maximum of 0.95d and substitute this into the area of reinforcement bar equations substitute the loading also into it for you to obtain the amount of reinforcement bar required in the shorter and the longer directions provide reinforcement bar for H12175 in the shorter the span and H10200 for the longer span the amount of reinforcement bar need to be greater than the required the amount of reinforcement bar provided needs to be greater than the required next you check for the shear resistance of the member based on the load analysis we know that the shear is critical at the shorter span therefore it will be suffice for us to check for the shorter span if the shorter span pass the likelihood of failure in terms of the longer span is not high you can skip the checking for the longer span to check the shear resistance of the shorter span first you need to substitute the D to obtain the K value when it is more than 2.0 then you will take K equals to 2 and then obtain the percentage of reinforcement bar provided and then substitute those value into the equations to determine the shear resistance of the concrete without reinforcement it is found to be 92.6 kN check the value against the minimum shear resistance equations and which is 54.7 the bigger value is used therefore the shear resistance is equal to 92.6 and it is greater than the shear load of 43.3 kN this means that no shear reinforcement is required next you check for the deflections the deflection again is checked on the shorter span as the shorter span appears to be more critical compared to the longer span the moment will be higher and the deflection is more likely in the shorter span therefore it is not necessary for you to check for the deflection at the longer span to check the deflections you need to obtain the percentage of reinforcement required compared with the raw node which is in the function of concrete strength the raw is found to be less than the raw node therefore this equation is used the member is a simply supported so the k will be equal to 1.0 substitute all the relevant value to obtain the L per D limit which is found to be 31.8 find the L per D actual by dividing the actual span with the depth you obtain 23.8 this number is less than the limiting L per D therefore the deflection is considered acceptable next you check for the minimum amount of reinforcement bar by using these two equations and the bigger value applies check the AS provided and the AS provided needs to be greater than the AS mean it is always more likely that the less amount of reinforcement bar is provided in the longer span therefore we can check the minimum amount of rebar at the longer span we do not need to check for the minimum rebar for the long shorter span due to the larger amount of reinforcement bar if this check to be passed the likelihood to fail in the shorter span is low 
Next, we check for the maximum reinforcement bar. So we will go for the pro higher provided reinforcement bar with the maximum reinforcement bar. And we need to check for the maximum bar spacing. We need to check for both directions as the requirement for the both directions is different. With that, it is found that the maximum spacing is limited by 400mm, which is more than 175 and 200. Therefore, the maximum spacing is considered acceptable. Lastly, we provide detailings for the members. The details are given here.